So, uh, this is a little awkward. Hi, I'm still alive. I haven't forgotten my password. I'm definitely still here. Even though I haven't been for like over four months. I've just been super ridiculously busy these past few months, and the little free time that I did have was mainly spent, well, sleeping. I have pretty much not had a social life since December, but things have eased up a bit because I'm about to graduate with a bachelor's degree in physics. Well anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about what's coming up, but first I'm going to offer a few shoutouts which are long overdue, and I am sorry about that. Busy days, what are you going to do? Anyway, our first shoutout goes to SEFD Science, which is one of the most entertaining YouTube channels I've ever seen. It's also one of the most criminally undersubscribed, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd fix that. The host, Jabril, has an enormous range of topics that I'll educate you on, from the size of the universe and our place in it, to the social dynamics of free water cups at fast food joints. The quality of his videos can't be understated. He has a 22-minute video about the Berenstain Bears, which apparently has been the subject of an ongoing internet controversy regarding the spelling of Berenstain. He tackles this ridiculously random and obscure controversy that almost nobody knows or cares about for over 20 minutes, and the end result is one of the most interesting and charming videos I've ever seen. This guy is fucking talented, and he needs a million more subscribers. I'm not exaggerating. Everything about this channel, from the production quality to the presentation, is absolutely on point. The second shoutout goes to Noah Plum 99 who I've christened the most reasonable motherfucker on YouTube. He also has the best goddamn way of expressing himself of anybody I've ever watched. I don't even know what it is. Is it the mannerisms? Is it the accent? Is it the sexy firefighter vibe? I don't know. All I know is that this man can read from a fucking phone book, and it would still be entertaining. He makes videos talking about pretty much everything from YouTube drama to current affairs, with a general emphasis on commentary about social justice. He's a funny guy, he's chill as fuck, give the man a sub and tell him Casey sent you. Our next shoutout goes to the true Puka, who also talks about social justice, but from a different angle. He's a smart guy and he really knows his shit. So you should give him a look, and if you don't find yourself agreeing with everything he says, at least enjoy a good intellectual exchange with a man who'll provide you with a decent challenge to your beliefs. Because that's what skepticism's really all about. It's about critically tackling dissenting views, and I am nothing if not a man who encourages skepticism and open dialogue. Besides, I like the guy. Maybe there's just a charm to the godless Jew from Brooklyn that I find appealing. Not that I'm endorsing any presidential candidates or anything. Anyway, sub this guy. He deserves a bigger audience. The next shoutout goes to Agent of Doubt, who regularly makes videos about pretty much everything and anything. His specialty is his weekly listing of videos that have been flagged within the skeptic community, and also a few other communities. He posts links, closely documents the consequences of YouTube's bullshit flagging policies, and stands, in my opinion, as a very powerful ally against censorship and other kinds of bullshit. Other than that, though, you never really know what you're going to get, but it's almost always a well-informed discussion about anything from contemporary politics to annoying social media tendencies. Give the guy a look, he's got quite an extensive repertoire of videos, and he uploads far more frequently than I do. Our next shout-out goes to Secular TJ, a YouTuber with a remarkable talent for thoroughly presenting an enormous wealth of information in an easily digestible and entertaining manner. This channel tends to be more history-oriented than most others I've come across within the skeptic community, and in particular, his Atheist Atrocity Fallacy series is probably the best of its kind. The quality of the production and information presented is extremely impressive, and definitely merits more attention, so please go check him out and see for yourself that I'm not exaggerating. In my own opinion, this is a channel that embodies what the online rationalist community should look like, and I'm proud to call TJ not only a comrade on YouTube, but a friend in real life. Please go check him out. The final shout-out goes to Gary Edwards, who really has a very special YouTube channel. Gary is a professional philosopher, but contrary to what popular perception might have you believe about philosophers, and I myself am guilty of having subscribed to such stereotypes, this philosopher has his feet planted on the ground and his head planted on his shoulders more firmly than those who poorly represent scholarship 
There are some neophytes who feel the need to show off how much more intelligent and educated they are than anyone who happens to disagree with them, and this is not an example of that. This is a man who's well-learned, respectful in the face of the sort of adversity that his lessers would be quick to pounce on, and has renewed in me a deep and profound respect for the discipline of philosophy. In fact, it's precisely that respect and the accompanying fascination that has made me decide to pursue a graduate-level degree in the philosophy of science alongside the physics PhD. It'll be tough as hell, make no mistake, but one of my greatest influences, the late and great Dr. Victor Stenger, was both a physicist and a philosopher, and I believe that that's a powerful combination, so I'm going to give it a go. At this point, I'm thinking that the terminal degrees will be a master's in philosophy and a PhD in physics, and I plan to get them concurrently. But anyway, it's a little soon to tell you guys the specifics of how everything is going to play out in my personal education, so if you care about that sort of thing, then just sit tight. I know that a few of you have been keeping up with me since the day I made my first video on this channel, the week after I graduated from high school, and your support, input, and recommendations have made my YouTubing a really great experience. I'm not going to stop making videos until I've said everything I want to say. And that being said, let's talk about the Quantum Theory Made Easy series. I know I left you guys dangling on a bit of a cliffhanger, but first chance I get, you're going to find out exactly how all of those problems I mentioned in part 2 got addressed, and what the hell this cat had to do with it all. Before I make that video though, I have to release another video addressing our old friend Kent Hovind. He's challenged me to a live debate at a university, and I feel obligated to give him a video response as soon as possible. If everything works out, it'll be up this weekend, and then I'll start wrapping up Quantum Theory Made Easy 3. After that, it'll be a few more episodes of the Quantum series, plus a few supplementary episodes going into particle physics, nuclear physics, and condensed matter physics, which I hope to complete before grad school starts. And then, well, we'll see. As they say, nothing lasts forever. But if it's all the same to you, here are the links to my Twitter, alternate YouTube page, and Ask Me account, where you can ask me whatever the hell you want, and I'll answer while shit-faced drunk. Links to the channels, Patreons, and social media platforms are in the descriptions. You'll be hearing from me soon. Enjoy the brand new outro.